been a while since I've made a video. Life got in the way, but we're going to try to get back in the groove here. And I'm going to make a video on this Trans Am today. I'm going to be talking about the transmission. In the car now is a Turbo 400 out of a Buick Riviera. If you don't know, all those short shaft Turbo 400s for Buick Olds and Pontiac were interchangeable. Same bell housing. So I got to thinking what trans belongs in that car because I want to make the car as correct as possible. So I started by getting out my trusty Turbo 400 book by Ron Sessions. The breakdown in it uh, by manufacturer, what the trans codes are. And that's how I was able to figure out that that was a Buick trans. Pretty much for the Pontiacs, the first letter is going to be a P. There's Cadillac, looks like the first letter is an A. Here's Chevy, looks like it's a C. Here's that Buick, looks like the first letter is a B. I have to go back in the videos and see exactly uh, what that code was. But we get over to 73 Pontiac here, and some of this information is inconclusive. We know it wasn't the HO, the Super Duty, so it's not a PQ code. This next one looks like a generic PC code for Pontiacs of the 455. I don't know what this is, police trailer and tow. Now we got a PR code for Grand Prix and whatnot, and finally Firebird PZ. So I was originally thinking, well, maybe it's a PZ code. If you recall back in the video series, we were talking about the VIN. We basically proved that the car does have the original engine in it. Someone posted this from the product description manual. I don't have this. I think I'm going to look to see if I can find this. From the emission sticker, which is still on the car, we know it was a California car, they added a ZC engine code for that car. And what was also posted during that conversation was this early production drivetrain chart. I think this car was built in, uh, I think, the 12th month of 1972. So I'm thinking that qualifies it as early production. I don't know. But from this chart here, I don't know where it came from. We know that the standard TA was the L75, and then the Super Duty was the LS2. Jump back over to this chart. Here you see that L75 with the ZC engine code that the car has. And then the next column was the trans code. There it is, PR. I had my answer. The next chart is the axle code. So we got AC, and it's got GUI there listed. The GUI was a 308 Posi. I'm pretty sure the car came with that, judging by the order sheet. If you go back in the series, we did address that too. The closest axle we found was a 342 Posi, which is a CM code axle. When I picked up that axle, I was told it was out of a 73 Super Duty. And that's what's in the car now. I think that's about as close as we're going to get. So to finish off the drivetrain, try to make it all period correct and code correct, I uh, set out on a mission to find this PR code trans. And here it is. I had to drive quite a distance to get this. The 73 P2R code trans. I just noticed there's a giant chunk missing out of the bell housing. That sucks. I have to see if we can address that somehow. Here's another example. I don't know if you can read this, but it says 77AA. According to this, it might have been a Fleetwood and DeVille, but not a high altitude car. In case you're wondering, I'm told this trans is out of a 1973 SJ Grand Prix with a 455. Very similar drivetrain to what that uh, TA has. I'm getting ready to rebuild this, and I, I don't think I'm going to put a rebuild video out on it. I got a couple out on that already. If I can figure out how, I'll put a link in the description below. What I want to do is determine if the intermediate clutch drum is set up for a roller clutch or a sprag. Here's a picture. Roller clutch is on the left. And then the next one over in the middle is a 16 element sprag, and on the right is a 34 element sprag. You need a different race for the sprag versus the roller clutch. So I'm hoping this has a sprag in it, because I'm going to put the 34 element sprag in it. If you want to know what that does, you can pause here and read this. I'm not going to have to take this trans completely apart to determine that. I need to take this pump out and uh, see what's behind it. So I'm going to roll this over. This trans still has a bracket on it for that center console. I got all the bolts out. I wish I had my tripod down here, but I don't. See it's working out. I'm gonna set it down for a second while I pull this out. Alright, let's see what happens here. There's the pump. Here's the forward clutch or I believe direct clutch. 
if I remember right. There was an intermediate clutch drum, pulls right on out of there. My plan was to reassemble this after I'm done here. This is going to be a real bugger to get in there. So you can see how this rotates one way but not the other. I'm going to have to get this clip off of here to see what's underneath there. This notch on this other side, I just got it started. It's a roller clutch, the undesirable type. So I got a couple parts transmissions. I'll be uh, taking those all apart and seeing if I can find one of these with the Sprague type clutch drum. I think when you put this on, it only goes on one direction. There. So that's really all I wanted to find out for now in this trans. So I'm to look into that and then look into fixing this gigantic chunk that's missing. This pump here didn't have this hole in it either. So I'd probably uh, change that pump out for a different pump. Have all the bolts in it. Here it is reassembled. I had to reassemble it because when I do get around to rebuilding it, I need to know what the end play is on this shaft. I'm going to talk about one more thing here. These transmissions are stamped with a partial VIN in it. So that would be the VIN for that Grand Prix. This transmission will never be correct for my car, but it's going to be about as close as I can get. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.